so here comes my favorite topic calculus just trust me guys these are the easy marks to score one question of calculus is about roughly 15 to 20 marks including differentiation and integration all right so roughly it's about 15 to 20 marks per paper now if your concepts of as level is pretty much strong when it comes to calculus then a2 seems like a piece of cake the calculus of a2 all right and even the university mathematics calculus is going to again feel piece of cake so make sure that the concept of calculus that you learn in as level are pretty much strong all right and then again in a2 you are just going to get this kind of free marks all right so yeah let's start with the question number 10 we are given that at the point 4 comma minus 1 on the curve the gradient of that curve is negative 3 by 2 it is also given that the gradient function which we call it dy dx is given by this equation where this k is a constant and in the first part we have to show that the value of this k comes out to be negative 2. now we know that the gradient value is negative 3 by 2 so we know that this value is negative 3 by 2 when the value of x is 4 so we can just substitute that and find out the value of k over here so we can say that x which is nothing but 4 to the power of negative half plus k is equals to negative 3 by 2 and if you solve this in the KLC that is if you do minus 3 by 2 minus of 4 to the power of negative half indeed you will be getting the value of minus 2 as the answer of part a then comes the next question that is to find the equation of the curve on which basically this point is lying and this is the gradient function so whenever we get this kind of question we are simply going to integrate this particular equation to get y right so we are having y is equal to integration of x to the power of negative half minus 2 dx so for those who don't know the logic behind how do we get this kind of equation from this equation what we are doing is we are separating dy and dx we are saying that dy is equals to x power of negative half minus 2 and this is x power of negative half and i'm also uh, multiplying this with dx now i'm integrating both sides on the left with respect to y on the right with respect to x so i know that integration of one with respect to y will change to y and on the right side we are having the same equation it's not changing so yeah that's how we basically derive like you know from this gradient function how do you get to the equation of curve okay so for those who didn't know this I hope that now it makes sense that how did we get this formula. Okay. So now let's go ahead and integrate this to get the equation of the curve. So y is equals to x power of negative half. So what is the formula of integrating this kind of term? It is we add plus 1 to it and we divide whatever is the new uh, power. We just divide it with that value. So x power of negative half. So what is negative half plus 1? Positive half. So this becomes x to the power of positive half but I also have to divide this by a half but when you divide it by a half 2 comes up and the bottom has 1 but we don't need to show 1 so that when 2 comes up it becomes 2x to the power of half then this minus 2 becomes minus 2x and don't forget the integration constant c. Now how do you get the value of this integration constant? Because we know that this 4 comma negative 1 is lying on this curve we are going to say that y is equals to negative 1, x is equals to 4, and then simply find out the value of c from here. So if I just create a suppression over here, what we are going to get is minus 1 is equals to 2 times 4 to the power of half minus 2 times 4 plus c. Therefore, the value of c that we will be getting if I substitute everything in the KLC minus 1 then minus 2 times 4 to the power of half and then minus uh, minus goes over there so it becomes plus 8 so the value of c comes out to be 3 so the final equation of the curve becomes y is equals to 2x power of half minus 2x plus 3 so this becomes answer to part b let's go to question c so in the C question, we are having to find the coordinates of the stationary point. So we know that the stationary point is given when this dy dx becomes 0. 
So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of everything apart from the equation of the curve because we'll need that. And I'll tell you why, just a second. So yes, I'll, I'll get rid of this and this as well. And I'll shift this equation of curve on the top. Okay. And we know that to get the x coordinates, to get the x coordinates of the stationary point, we know that dy dx must be equal to zero. So what is dy dx equal to? It's x to the power of negative half minus two. And now if it's equal to zero, we get that x to the power of negative half is equal to two. And now if you just uh, do the inverse on both the sides, so this becomes x power of half is equals to one by two. And now if you square on both the sides, what's your x? x becomes one by four. So now this x is the x coordinate of the stationary point that has been asked. And now to find the y value of the stationary point, as I'd mentioned, we can use this equation, substitute this one by four over here and see what's the y value of the stationary point. So let's go ahead and do that. So now my y uh, coordinate of the stationary point is two times one by four to the power of half minus two times one by four plus three. So therefore my y value will be equal to, so two times one by four to the power of half, then minus two times one by four plus three. So it comes out to be 3.5 or in other words, seven by two. So what's my final stationary points coordinate? Sometimes what happens is a lot of students just say that yeah, x equal to one by four is the solution. Just make sure what is asked. Is it x coordinate only or the coordinates? So when they use coordinates, they basically mean x and y both. So therefore we can say that the stationary point is at one by four comma seven by two. So this becomes the answer of part C. Let's move ahead if there is part D. Yes, there is part D as well. And over here, we are asked to determine the nature of the stationary point. So whenever it comes down to the nature of the stationary point, mostly we need the second derivative of the main Y, right? So we are already having the equation of the first derivative that is X to the power of negative half uh, minus two. So let me just write it. We know that d by dx is x to the power of negative half minus two. Now to get the second derivative, what we do is we just need to differentiate this. So I'll just say that d to y dx squared, if you do the derivative of this, minus half comes down. Let me strike it in a proper way. So minus half, then x, what is minus half minus one, it's minus three by two. And then minus two is just a constant, so it just goes away. And now we have to substitute the x value of the stationary point inside it. So x is equals to one by four is what I need to substitute over here. So minus half times one by four to the power of negative three by two. Let's check what is the value. So minus half into one by four to the power of negative 1.5 comes out to be negative 4. So what happens over here? Therefore, we got that d to y dx square is less than 0. So this condition gives us what? It says that the nature of the stationary point is actually a maximum, right? So stationary point, stationary point 1 by 4 comma 7 by 2 is a maximum or a maximum point of curve. So yeah, that brings us to the end of question 10. I hope that there is no part E. Yes, so yeah, that's it for this particular question.